I saw a guy yesterday here, and he travels all over the world, mostly fishing. And he made the comment, I don't see how anybody could shoot some of these animals like a rhino. So I said, well, I was just on a farm in, you know, they call a rancher farm in Namibia, and they had had a black rhino herd. By the end of the last century, 98% of the black rhino population had perished, which means by 1995, fewer than 2,500 black rhinos roamed the Southern African region, mostly in Namibia and South Africa. The black rhino species was officially designated to be critically endangered. Since that low point in 1995, the black rhino population has doubled in number. This growth has occurred primarily in Namibia. To understand how, it's best to first learn more about Namibia. It's an uninhabitable country. It's uh, the second least populated country in the world. We can't grow crops, for example. Everything is imported. In the 70s, a lot of people were commercial farmers purely by cattle and sheep, because that was basically the only income for Namibians. So wildlife were in direct competition with these commercial farmers. But over the years, people have realized that wildlife has a, a much higher value, basically, because you don't need to look after them. They look after themselves. It's a self-sustainable type of farming, if you can call it like that. A natural life that lives on that land. And people started to realize the value in it, and especially because our government has written into our constitution that there should be a balance between wildlife and human beings, which is one of the most beautiful things that you can actually put in a constitution to give a right to the life of wildlife as well as its people. Our Namibian government really realizes the importance of wildlife, and they've actually um, passed um, last year in our parliament where they said Namibia ban all hunting bans. Our Namibian government realized that there's a lot of pressure on hunting coming from the international scenes. And because this is one of our biggest assets is our wildlife as well as hunting being part of it, they've taken a big stance in parliament and in government decisions where they've actually changed the whole view or restructured hunting, if you can call it like that. So one of the steps that the government took was changing the word from trophy hunting to conservation hunting. But what it literally means is actually conservation. You are, you are adding to conservation through it. Currently, Namibia hosts the world's largest free-roaming black rhino population in the world. And purely, again, because of strategies and people and our government realizing the worth of, of rhino. Let me first start by saying that all black rhino in Namibia um, belongs to the nation or the government. Uh, nobody, no person in its own can own black rhino. But the, our government always re also realized that they need to expand the habitats for the rhino to grow in population. So a few years ago, or actually many years ago, they started the custodian program where they would move some of the black rhino that were in national parks onto private land or communal land even because we needed more habitat. The Namibian government has developed the Black Rhino Management Strategy based upon the recommendations and oversight of the IUCN African Rhino Specialist Group. The plan has three primary goals. Expand available range for the rhinos. Grow the black rhino population by at least 5% every year. And minimize poaching. The Namibian government allows a maximum of five male rhinos to be hunted each year. That's about one quarter of 1% of the rhino population in Namibia. Counterintuitive as it is, the removal of these five post-reproductive males is intended to increase the numbers of the rhino population. About four to five rhinos are being granted by CITES each year for Namibia to be hunted, uh, which is an offtake that will never, ever, ever get to, to compete with the population growth that's in Namibia. Only post-productive animals are being hunted. And through the custodian program that the government started, lots of rhinos were relocated to their natural habitats all over Namibia, and not only in national parks. Well, we've got some black rhinos as part of the custodian program on one of our properties. And I've witnessed how one rhino, big bull, actually killed off a younger bull calf. And it was the, one of the worst things that I ever had to witness in my life. It literally slammed into him 
again and again and again and again, and I literally cried like a baby. It was it was so sad to see, and, and you can't do anything about it. You, you 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 can't just walk in there and try to stop them. It it just happens, and and it it was purely because of this bull being in a herd that he, he, he was post he was he was old, he was angry. Um, he doesn't produce any longer, so all the offspring that comes from other bulls, he just wants to kill. And I witnessed that that day, and I realized that, yes, it's, it's part of nature and it's part of life, but if there's something that we can do about it, why not utilize it? Why not taking 500,000 US dollars for it and giving it back to the, to, to the, to the programs which can help save rhino ultimately it um, all the money that's being paid for the black rhinos that are hunted in Namibia goes directly back into the game and products trust fund of Namibia and that money is 100% utilized to translocate even more rhino or to dehorn some rhino for protection or to put up some water stations and water holes all over Namibia we've lost on our property seven rhinos so far at that stage of that one bull and all of a sudden, it's 10 years of a reproduction rate that was gone in, in a year's time. And, and you, you can't stand for that. Of the seven rhinos killed by that one old bull, two were female. And allowing for five years of growth before they're able to reproduce, and factoring 18 months for gestation and another 18 months for weaning, that means after about 13 years, these two females would be responsible for four calves apiece which means, conservatively estimating, that one original old non-reproductive bull deprived the world of not just the seven rhino he killed, but an additional eight rhino for a total of 15. Again, that's a conservative estimate. It doesn't take into account the offspring the males could have produced and completely ignores the improved genetics the different younger, stronger males would bring to the black rhino population. That's one aspect of how hunting one old post-reproductive rhino can help an endangered species grow in numbers. Because ultimately that's what we want to do. We want to save them, not kill them. And two years ago, one of the old males was kicked out of the herd, basically, which is what rhinos do. And the unfortunate thing, they're past breeding age, but they also are aggressive with other rhinos and kill them. Yes, it was a wealthy hunter who purchased and took that hunt, but $300,000 went straight to rhino protection in Namibia. As a result of Namibia's rhino management strategy, the black rhino has moved down the list to vulnerable and was recently declared near threatened. That's three steps in the positive direction in just one generation. I've got a high regard for people that want to protect animals. I always really understand why people come out so strongly against hunting because it's a pure natural effect and emotion where people want to protect wildlife. We need to be able to utilize the post-productive animals that, that are too many, that are fighting, and that really restrict um, the population growth of, of rhino. So we need to advocate that strongly and have people know that we are, we are custodians, we are the protectors. We really want to see our wildlife thrive and we want to do it on the right and the ethical way. There's nobody more wanting to protect wildlife than, than the Namibians. And I really want people to understand, to sit down and listen and see how hunting contributes to not only saving the wildlife, but also saving our human population and our communal um, upliftment and social upliftment in our country.